Hey, quite a few people have been asking for my Visual Studio Code setup, so I thought I'd make a video explaining that, uh, the themes that I use, the plugins I use, and my settings. So, so number one, let's start with the theme. The theme that I use is named One Dark Pro, and this can be found on the store by simply typing One Dark Pro. Another theme that I'm quite a big fan of is Nord, and you can find that on the store too, named Nord. It's a sort of bluish theme, similar to this one, but instead of dark colors, it's a much more brighter theme. So Nord is quite cool, and so is One Dark Pro. I'd love to know what themes you use. Let me know in the comments section below. And the next thing that I have to show is obviously my settings. So we can find the settings by going to preferences and settings. Now my font size is 20 because I'm recording a lot and when I'm recording, I need to make sure that everybody can see what we're doing. I have word wrap on as well so that it automatically wraps onto the next line. I experiment quite a lot with the latest TypeScript version. So I have the TSC version set to false. And as I work on an insane amount of projects, I do have the window.reopen folders equal to zero, just so I can focus on what's important. The font family that I use at the moment is Monaco. I'm always looking for different fonts. Operator looks quite cool, but I still have yet to ship out the £200 for that. If you haven't seen Operator before, quite a few people do use it in the coding space. Uh, the zoom level, yet again, is just simply three because I'm recording. I exclude a lot of the files. Sometimes I change this to be different ones. Like I might add anything slash .js here if I'm working with TypeScript and JavaScript and the JavaScript files are on the same file. I do exclude quite a few files. Oftentimes I change this a lot when I'm working in projects that have JavaScript and TypeScript in the same files or folders. And we could simply do .js here equals to true and that would obviously hide all the JavaScript files. I'm a big fan of quick suggestions and I add this in my editor so I like it in my comments, strings and other so I set everything here to true. Similar things for other languages. I disable the welcome enabled so I don't really have the welcome pop up on VS Code. The icon theme that I use and if we did have a project open here we do have the settings.json open is VS SETI and that comes with Visual Studio Code as far as I'm aware. Uh, to enable that you'd press command P, uh, icon and then set your file icon theme to be SETI. Next color theme, that's simply for the theme, One Dark Pro. If I'm using a font that comes with some particular characters for coding, I'll add this setting. With regards to TS Lint, I like to make sure everything's formatted as much as possible. So whenever I save the file, it automatically fixes the file. Fix in the sense of format the file. I'm experimenting with these other two on format on type and format on paste. This automatically formats the file whenever you paste or type something in the editor. I currently have mouse wheel zoom turned off. The cursor style is line, but sometimes I change this to block like so. I do find that using block is a bit annoying when we're making videos, but if people like it and they want to see that, we can leave it on block. I'm also currently disabling Translate 3D because you might have saw it inside of the Kendo UI videos, but when we actually moved around the document, there was a lot of flashing on screen. So until that's fixed, I'm using this, Disable Translate 3D equals to true. That seems to fix it for me. I've not really tried turning it off yet and I don't really need to, so I'm gonna leave it true for now, but I wouldn't suggest that you set this. And of course, I also have Confirm sync is set to false when I'm pushing to my Git repositories just to make sure I don't make any mistakes. So that's about it for my user settings. The next thing that people are asking me about quite a bit is this references. And these references here are to do with code lens. Now I was fairly sure that I set this manually so maybe something has changed in this regard. But if we head back to the settings, maybe we can turn this off if we type editor dot code lens equal to false. And you can see we no longer have that references. So if you want to add the references, make sure that you add code lens equal to true. So I'm going to put this back, editor.code lens equal to true. And I think that's by default. It might be default for me, or it could just be the fact that I use the insiders edition of code and it's something that's coming along. Or it might be because I've got code lens installed and potentially you don't. So if you're looking for that, it's all to do with that editor.codelens setting. As I've switched to Visual Studio Code Insiders build, I don't really have too many plugins because the plugins don't come along with that. But the plugins that I've been using the last week are especially the Angular language service. If you're using Angular, you definitely need this. 
As you can see in this GIF here, it gives you autocomplete of the properties and methods inside of your component class, as well as components throughout the application and much more. The next thing I'm using is the Fuse language, and that gives me syntax highlighting for Uno and .ux files. I'm then using things like the build log, and this is an unofficial plugin, but it allows us to get the output panel of the Fuse preview inside of VS Code. So if there's any errors with the Fuse app, I get to see it straight inside the editor. I don't have to tab out and see my terminal. It also condenses it down too. So if I run Fuse preview inside of the VS Code terminal, I might find that we get a load more logs than we actually need. So this just allows us to see the log message quickly and easily. Come to think of it, I also need to install the output colorizer plugin. So do that if you're looking for colorization of the log files. So the next thing is obviously the One Dark Pro. And this is my current theme. The next is things like the colorizer, like I just said. So if we are looking for colors inside of the VS Code terminal, this is how we get that. Next is Python. That's simply for running Python stuff inside of our VS Codes. Quarka.js, I did a video on this if you haven't seen it already, and this allows us to essentially see the results of our JavaScript in a playground fashion within VS Codes. And finally, it's things like TSLint and ESLint. TSLint allows us to take advantage of all the linting things that we're using inside of the settings, so I definitely recommend this. Things like the auto fixing and some other prettifying rules. And that is about it. That's the settings I use, the theme I use any extensions that I use, and I can't think of anything else that I've missed within VS Code. Like I said, I also use the Insiders build. You can find that on the Visual Studio Code website. If you just put it into Google Visual Studio Code Insiders, you'll be able to find the next build that is not yet released. If I've missed something, or you'd like to share something that you use inside of your Visual Studio Code, I'd love to hear that. Let me know in the comments section below. And until that time, my name's Paul. Hit that subscribe button to stay updated, and I'll see you very soon.